world number one, Kaiki Pacheco. The toughest sport on dirt doesn't play favorites. Hey, 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 hey. As danger took center stage last week in Springfield. Jess Lockwood is face down in the dirt. Leaving the door wide open for last season's check. Cooper Davis dominates. This week, Austin, Texas plays host to the PBR World Championship race, where double points are on the line. And time is running up for Cowboys looking to make their moves. The PBR has brought the big guns to the Texas Capitol as Austin swings open its doors for the sports elite for the first time since 2001. Expect an eclectic crowd as well as electrifying action as these Austinites get set for another series of head-to-head -head matchups. Defending PBR world champ Cooper Davis had the hot hand last week, reminding everyone how he won his title last year. While defending world champion Bucking Bull Sweet Pro's Bruiser sent a not so subtle reminder of his own in Springfield, his 47 and a quarter bodes well in his battle with Pearl Harbor. ATX is the stage as the best move front and center yet again. It's time for another 15 15 bucking battle on CBS. And look at this, less than 500 points separate the top four. Pacheco still your world number one, but Aparecido, Davis, and Lockwood, they are all right there. Hello again, everybody, alongside two-time PBR world champion Justin McBride. I am Craig Hummer. Mac, last week we all were witness. Cooper Davis gobbled up 850 points. That tends to make a statement, but this is a sport where momentum can be fickle. Yeah, and I think we could really see it shift in this 15-15 bucking battle, Craig. And the reason I think that is because of Cooper Davis's matchup against Big Cat. None of the guys get along very good at all with this bull. On the other hand, Eduardo has a really good rematch with Mystical. This is a bull that he's come up a little short on before, but I think he gets the job done here today. And if he does, that's going to put all the pressure squarely on Kaiki Pacheco, who has not been good at all as of late. I know you're fired up, but I think Cooper Davis would respectfully disagree with you. He's standing by with Leah Garcia. To keep his momentum, Cooper needs to get past Big Cat. Give us a rundown of your experience with that bull. You know, I've had him drawn five times this year and got on him once and got a re-ride, so really don't know what to expect out of him, so uh, we're going to take him one jump at a time and go from there. You went from sixth in the world standings to third last weekend. Do you think you're getting in these guys' heads? I don't know if I'm getting in their head, but, you know, I feel like I'm riding good, so I can't worry too much about what their thoughts are. Good point. Let's check in with Shorty Gorham to hear his thoughts on the champ in this bull race. Well, Lee, I got I to gotta agree with Cooper Todd Davis right there. I think he's riding really good, too. 2017 is shaping up much like the 2016 uh, world title race for both the bull and the Cowboys. Cooper Todd Davis is on a roll right now. He looks really sharp, looks really in control. In fact, I think the best of all the riders. Another animal that, I, that I've been so impressed with is Sweet Pro's Bruiser. This is the that every time I watch him, I just get more and more and more impressed with him. The 2016 champ, looking like he's going to do it again in 2017, guys. Shorty brought up some big names. Let's show you the matchups here in Austin. We're going to start with Brazilian. Claudio Montagna Jr. will go up against Cooper Tyre Semper Fi. Shorty just mentioned Bruiser. Well, he will be our second bull out. He'll face Brazilian Marco Agushi. But as we work our way down, Stormy Wing will have his hand full aboard Speed Demon. Here are your top men in the world as we turn the page. Lockwood will face Jack Shot. That's the bull that we thought Kaiki Pacheco would pair up against great the past couple weeks, but has given him problems. We've talked about Davis and Big Cat. You mentioned Aparecido and Mystical, and they will. we will finish it off with Kaiki Pacheco facing Utter Lover. But we start with a different Brazilian. This is Claudio Montagna Jr., who has been in four different bucking battles this season, Mac. 
yet to register a qualified ride, and Semper Fi is going to make it tough on him. Yeah, here's the thing, though. I, I think that Claudio is the favorite in this matchup if and only if his head's in the game. If he's all in on this ride, he's going to ride this bull no problem. But here's the, here's the deal with Semper Fi. He's going to have a little hop and skip and usually around to the left. He wants to pull guys down over his shoulder onto his head the first second jump out of here. When you talk about Cooper Tire Semper Fi, this bull has such a resume. 49 outs just in the Built Ford Tough Series. But you started hitting at it. You have to ride this bull the right way, which not many guys are able to do. This bull's been out eight times this year. The only guy to quite register a ride is Joao Ricardo Vieira. And it's going to stay that way in 2017 because Claudio did not do what you said. Yeah, and a, and a little bit of the timing issue with this bull, the hop and skip that I'm talking about, you'll get to see it here on the replay from Semper Fi, right around here. And Claudio is pretty good right around the corner, but you watch as the ride progresses where his head goes. He's a little inside, comes out just fine. Now here he's in good shape still. All he's got to do is hold, stay there. Instead, watch where his head goes right here. It's going to come up, and everything is going this direction, and Simplify is still coming to the left. Claudio's got to be more in the game than that. Montagna Jr. ranked 17th in the world coming into this weekend. So far, not able to make up any ground on his friend Kaiki Pacheco, who's number one. Let's see what Marco Aguse can do. This is a rematch. These two have met before. It was this year, Mac. It didn't last very long. In the bucking battle in Kansas City, it went 2.1. Yeah, and you can see the bull scores there from Bruiser. He's in second right now in the standings. But we were talking about momentum just a little earlier. And I feel like the momentum in the bull race has shifted also. I feel like Bruiser, even though he's in number two, is now the front runner. Well, after his out last week, few, I think, would argue with you. That 47 and a quarter not only sent a statement, but as we go back, it, it was an exclamation point. Yeah, and this is just, you're just getting to see two seconds worth of what this bull is really capable of. And he just gets better as a ride progresses. The longer a guy can stay on Bruiser, the higher in the air he's going to get and the more show he's going to have. And just to clarify, that was the out where they paired up in Kansas City. Bruiser's last out, if you recall, was against Jess Lockwood, where unfortunately for Lockwood, he KO'd him in that 15-15 bucking battle last week in Springfield. Similar to what he did to Lockwood a week ago, Mac. Bruiser put in that big move, got a Gucci up off of his pockets, right over. Craig, that is spot on, man. I, Bruiser has really got this figured out. You can see Marco starts a great ride around to the left, away from his hand. He's in perfect shape, but watch when Bruiser starts to go back to the right right here. He's going to start coming back under himself, and he's got enough backup that he's wanting these guys' his feet behind him and their upper body over his shoulder. Not only is he a great athlete, but he's really smart, too, in Bruiser. Bruiser's score this week, 45 and three quarters. But, Mac, you said it. At the beginning of that ride, I could see it from the look on your face. Marco was locked down. He had a seat, man, and that's a really good score right there. You know, it's not the 47 and a quarter we've seen, but that is still a good score and a good trip for Bruiser. When we talk about scoring, we try to remind everyone, if you're new to this sport, half the ride comes from the rider, half the ride comes from the bull. And in a 15-15 bucking battle like this, Mac, these difficult bulls actually can help a rider get a bigger score. Well, you gotta have them. If you wanna win at this level, I mean, when you're talking about the top 15 guys in the world, this is the only way you can separate them is by getting on great bulls. Rubens Barbosa has a little rematch of his own. He has faced Cochise on three separate occasions. One of those was a disqualification in the shoots in St. Louis earlier than year, this year. But the other times he's faced him, including last week, it did not last long. No, it didn't go good at all. And when you talk about great bulls, this is one of them. This is everything you could look for in a really good bull. He's big, he's strong, he's pretty mean, Shorty Gold, and that can sometimes play mind games with the guys. Absolutely, you know, and this, this bull, he, he, he's really tough for a right-handed rider because he's gonna be two big, long jumps out there around to the left, and then he throws them off right out in front of him where he's got a good chance to hit him. 
great play-by-play -play from Shorty right there as the Bull did exactly what he mentioned, except Rubens didn't want to get thrown over the front end too early. Man, Rubens started a good ride right here. That was cool stuff from Shorty, just calling it as it happened right there. Round to the left, though. Rubens is in good shape right here. But you see he missed the front end one time, and this Bull, I was talking about how big and strong he is. When you take that kind of power, and Rubens is one of the strongest guys on oh. tour, but that kind of power, he's no match against it. And he's not going to get any extra points for sticking the landing. Barbosa, the latest to fall by the wayside. This bucking battle is all bulls so far. Wrangler's Long Live Cowboys 15-15 bucking battle on CBS Sports is sponsored by Ford F-Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a Ford F-150. Las Vegas, proud host of the PBR World Finals. And by BMW Trailer Hitches, the official hitch of the PBR. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to your team this football season. Watch highlights, get breaking news, scores, and more. Download the CBS Sports app today. The Bulls up 3-0. Next out of the shoots, Cody Nance. Before he goes, let's check in with Leah. In 2009, this man came onto the scene. Cody Nance won Rookie of the Year that year for his accomplishments. I talked to him before the show today to say, how do you stay motivated eight years later? And what he's working on right now with every single ride is I'm going to sum it up in one word, effort. He says, as long as I do my job and I put 100% in to every ride, I don't care about the score, I don't care about the judging, and I don't care about the world standings. It's all about my own effort. You know what, Mac? We saw that in his round one ride earlier this weekend. He did not get the score. He touched the dirt at 7.98, but when that ride happened, you were as fired up as I've ever seen you. It was almost like you saw a 98-point ride. Uh, Cody Nance is all effort, you know, and that's the that's the thing. And, and his explanation to Leah, I think, is awesome, man. When, when you can approach any sport that way, when you just enjoy the process of what you're doing, how hard it is, how physical it is, how hard he's got to try, that's when you can really be able to start winning. Well, and you mentioned winning. I mean, Cody Nance has seven different event wins over the course of his career that Leah mentioned started in 2009. It's been hit or miss somewhat over the past couple years, but this season, we often talk about riders quietly putting together success, and he's been doing that. Well, and I think he got out of his own way. He quit worrying about all the things that he couldn't control and focused on the things he can control. And I got to tell you, this bull that he's getting on Chocolate Shake, I think he's a lot like man. He does whatever it takes to get the job done. This is going to be a great match right here. They met earlier this year in Little Rock, Arkansas. It lasted 6.21 seconds. And any time, well, go back to your career. When you took a bull that deep, did that just give you more confidence you could get the one or two extra seconds? Yeah, I think so, because you, you know what they feel like, you know what happened, the reason they got you, and you feel like you can correct that. A lot to like from Cody Nance right there. The qualified ride, Mac, that you mentioned, the effort that Leah mentioned, and it comes together for our first ride of this day. Yeah, and that is a lot of good stuff happening in the course of eight seconds. You watch this. This bull is up and down, good kick the whole time. Nance starts off in perfect position, then you'll see him get a little out of shape. He doesn't panic and try and hold. Both feet come out of the bull right there. Let's him pull him back to the center and realize, hey, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. Let me move right back up over here and finish him. Now he's just giving him the business. Let's send it to Leo. Cody Nance, you told me before the show that you were going to give it 100% effort. How do you rate that? Same as every other time. 100%. He's still fired up, Craig. Well, right, and there's your perfect follow-up because he said it's the same as any other ride, and that's, to all your points, what the storyline was and will continue to be. Now let's talk about Joao Ricardo Vieira. He gets a chance against Hurricane Hustler. This could be big. This bull look for him to be right here in the gate to the left. That's Joao's strong direction when a bull goes that way. Tied for the most wins in this format since it began back in 2010. This matchup has got some potential to put some 90s up right here, Craig. Except for Joao, he's had rides. He's on the clock, by the way. So now he's down to about 25 seconds to nod or he'll be disqualified.
It's not going to be a big score, but it is another score. And what's been very interesting, Mac, the 15-15 bucking battle pairings usually are much more difficult, right, than the long rounds. Well, now we're f being told there are some flags, which means he will get a rewrite opportunity if he rewrites this bull. But let me finish my thought. Joao has now ridden three 15-15 bucking battle bulls in a row. You take those rides out, he's bucked off eight in a row against easier bulls. Yeah, he's just... <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe he just gets up for these big matchups more, and, he, and he's more into it. But here's the deal. The bull had an off day, didn't have very much kick. Joao wasn't helping him much. He's kind of out of position, so that's going to make for low scores. I think we all can read what that nod means. He's not going to take the re-ride. He's going to keep 80 points on the board, which I want to go back to this format. He's been in this format eight times this year. He has five qualified rides. That's pretty amazing, man. When, and I know that was a low one right there, but just to get those amount of rides, that's really good at this level. And, and to remind everybody, the reason is we show you the rookie standings, because Cody Teal, who is leading them, is about to get on board Cooper Tires Brown Sugar. The, re the reason rides in this format matter is they're worth one and a half times what a normal round win is. And this is a round where they don't ride a lot of bulls, so he's got a chance of getting some of those points. Cody Teal. And Cooper <laughs> Tires Brown Sugar continues a career when just when you think this bull is mellowed, just when you think this bull can be figured out. He does that. Yeah, he's been a good bull for a long time. But here's the deal. Cody Till is getting beat out of the chute so bad. Look how far he's setting down as this bull is turning back. I mean, all of his weight is here. When this bull's front end is in the air, Cody Till has got to be up off of his butt, getting a little weight driving down his legs. He is behind everything. Brown Sugar is still way too good a bull to get by like that. Two qualified rides. You wonder what contact sounds like? We just let you know. You can go ask Cody Teal what it feels like. Go ask Cody Nance what it feels like to be leading. 85 and a half. He is your bad boy mower lead dog. Time now to take a look at this week's Matador Jerky Bullfighting 101. I drew a bull they say can't be rolled. This week on Bullfighting 101 presented by Matador Jerky, we're talking rider status. Laramie starts off in pretty good shape, but when he gets up, he kind of moves in the same direction of the bull. The bull whips around and clips him with a back foot and knocks him out. As soon as we realize that, we just know we got to get that bull's attention so he don't come back on top of him again. When a guy gets knocked out, things just become so much more dangerous because he's there laying vulnerable. He's not able to defend himself, crawl, get out of the way of the next shot. Glaremy comes off in a position where he's right underneath the bull, you know, and when the feet come down on a guy like that, you know that they're not going to be getting up, and you just got to do everything you can to get that bull moved out away from the rider. Jesse does a great job right here pulling him around, but unfortunately that bull clips him. Right here we're hollering at each other that he's out. We know then that Frank's got to get a hold of that bull, draw him some distance, but when he does, Jesse and I want to be within striking distance, but don't dare him to come back toward the bull. Here's exactly what I saw in this ride. This is my point of view, and Glaramie's making a great ride, you know, and uh, he gets loose here at the end, and we're just waiting for that hand to come out at any moment. You know, it sticks in there a little bit, pulls him over the front shoulder, and this bull's motion's coming back to us. I try to get my hands on him, draw the bull's attention away, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, we can't stop the bull's feet, and they swung around and, you know, got Glaramie. Right here, I finally get him to kind of follow me you know, to kind of come on around and uh, get away from Glaramie. And then Je uh, Shorty and Jesse are shielding Glaramie and the, and the bull decides to go out. The PBR Built for Tough World Finals return to Las Vegas at the T-Mobile Arena, November 1st through November 5th. Five-day packages are now on sale. You can call PBR customer service at 800-732-1727 to lock in your seats today.
We've got two qualified rides today. These are the previous winners so far this season. Eduardo Aparecido, our number two rider in the world. The only double winner, Sacramento and Thackerville last week in Springfield. It was Cooper Davis winning three rounds last weekend. Part of that huge point surge that he was able to bring in Missouri. Let's check in with Shorty. Well, Craig, I got to tell you, before we go to Stetson Lawrence, uh, there's a couple things that I've noticed about Stetson. And, the, and, and one of the things is something that Justin McBride touched on earlier today uh, with Cody Nansen. That's the amount of effort that this guy puts out. When he keeps his chin tucked and keeps going to these bulls, I think this guy's as impressive as anybody. He's a little bit loose, but he, the effort level gets him through some, some uh, troubling situations. Another thing that, that he has been doing here lately and been making it a little bit tougher on himself is he's been running his rope back a little bit too far and he hasn't been pulling it tight enough. That makes everything a lot tougher on yourself. If he can keep that rope up forward and pull it tight enough where it doesn't slip back, I think he's got a good chance. You know, these ropes, the handles in these ropes are built, or the, the whole rope is custom made for each guy. If I was Stetson Lawrence, I think I would have my rope maker make the handle just a little bit bigger so that it was more comfortable in my hand while you got enough pull and tight enough on the bull to keep it in place. Well, Shorty, and you bring up some great points right there. I got a chance to talk with Stetson earlier, and we were talking just about that. You know, because I, I was trying to explain to him that if he can keep his bull rope where it belongs, when he needs that anchor, you know, six, seven seconds into the ride, if he's a little out of shape, if his bull rope comes with him, then the ride's over. But if his bull rope will stay, you're going to see this guy start making the whistle a lot more than he already does, and that's going to be dangerous for the rest of the competitors. We just showed you a stat. He does not have a qualified ride in his career, 11 attempts in this format. Remember, it took him a few years to win an event title, too. Shark with a biting move about halfway through that ride. That got Lawrence out of position. And new rope position or not, Max, sometimes when a bull puts in a move like that, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah, strong bull here in Mud Shark. And I'm going to go back to Shorty's point. I love the effort that Stetson Lawrence puts out. We see his free arm come way, way down to the side. That's going to pull his shoulders that way. If he can get it up a little more, I think he'll ride Mud Shark next time. Cody Nance watches another one of his competitors fall by the wayside. He is your bad boy more lead dog. Only 85 and a half though, so a great chance some of these riders to come will supplant Nance in the top. Next to get his opportunity, Stormy Wing. A guy that has had a great season so far, including a 15-15 bucking battle when we started our summer when we came back, excuse me, from summer break, that was 89 and a half aboard Wired Child. What do you think he can do against Speed Demon? Well, I think this is a really intriguing matchup. I think both Stormy and Speed Demon are just now starting to get to the level where they belong. This bull has really started being impressive. This bull's had a little bit of an attitude here lately too, Justin. <laughs> We talked about the effort of a couple of the riders. Let's talk about the effort from Speed Demon. That bull just kept getting faster and faster. Yeah, that, that's a bull that, that you're going to see in years to come, I feel like, really start putting his name in the hat with all the really good bulls. Look at what this bull is doing. And Stormy Wing is trying to get there. I mean, this is a... This is just two good athletes really going at it right here, and the bull wins today. The judges were duly impressed. 44 and three quarters from Speed Demon, and his stats continue to grow. He's been out 12 times, only ridden twice in his career. As we transition to Brazilian, Denner Barbosa, the 22-year-old, gets an opportunity against Catfish John. Catfish John in years past has been much more rideable. This year been out 11 times, only two qualified rides. And that is an interesting stat, that whole board right there, Mac. You talk about riding percentages, the season average. There's never been a world champion with a rider percentage under 52%. And the whole kit and caboodle of the PBR is below 50. Yeah, and, and that's just showing how dominant that the Bulls have been this season. But here's a real chance for dinner. Catfish John, this is a really good bull. Around to the right is, is the direction he's going to start. Sometimes around the six second mark, he'll jump out and go back to the left. But there's nothing phony about this bull. He's up and down and around and round. 
Eduardo Aparecido, the last man to ride this bullet iron cowboy, 89 points. Shaking him off there. I, I don't, he's got his leg down. He's saying the bull is leaning on him on the back side. But when you can get your leg between the bull and the chute, that's all you're looking for is to have your leg down in a good spot and make sure the bull is not squatting. There's the nod. Catfish John clobbers Denner Barbosa at the end of the ride. The buck off was inevitable almost as soon as the gate swung open. And that's the thing about trying to get everything so perfect in the shoot. Sometimes you get locked down too tight. And Denner is going left or to the right way before Catfish John is. And once you reach across the front end with your free arm, your ride is going to be over because there's no way for you not to touch him. And if you touch with your free arm, time stops. Catfish John sends Denner Barbosa into the steal and home with no score. Cody Nance did his job here in Austin. He's your bad boy mower lead dog. The target, 85 and a half. Chase Outlaw has no problem with the speed of the game. This is a guy that truly believes in himself. He sets that jaw and accepts a challenge. Every time he nods his head, he's going to go at it. Riding with more ambition than I've seen him ride in a long time. Just keeps fighting and working. Nobody looks better on the back of a bull. Chase Outlaw continues his winning ways. I'll tell you what, he's got the ability to ride rank bulls. There's a new sheriff in town. That's putting an exclamation point on it. Outlaw is your winner of the Sioux Falls Bucking Battle in the midst of his best season ever. Chase Outlaw going to be one of the American team members you'll get to see in the debut PBR Global Cup. That'll be in Edmonton November 9th through November 11th. Your tickets now on sale. You can call PBR Customer Service at 800-732-1727. Lock in those seats today. Mac, you're going to be the coach of the American squad. What do you think your chances are, my friend? Well, I like them with the team of, <laughs> of USA riders that there are. And I got to tell you, I'm glad to see this guy back from injury. Speaking of which, Shorty Gorham, Chase Outlaw did not take much time off after that separated right shoulder. No, he didn't. And there's a reason why, Craig. This is a tough little scrappy guy. We've talked about uh, Cody Nance, you know, and Stetson Lawrence and the amount of effort they put out. This guy's no different from either one of those guys. He's got a pretty tough bull. He's going to be out there and round to the left, but this bull's got a ton of forward movement. Uh, Chase, Chase Outlaw's got a really short uh, riding arm. Or, or his arms are short for, for his body type. What that means is if Chase ever misses that bull's front end, it's really going to pull on him. The good thing is he's going into his hand, but he's got to ride this bull, I think, Justin, like he's going straight. Yeah, absolutely, man. Fire and smoke, that's the thing with him. Lots of forward movement around to the left, and as Shorty was just saying, that's going to want Chase back. Now, Chase can make some big moves and still get there, but this bull will get so strong if he gets back that he'll have a hard time hanging on to his bull rope. The best bet to ride this bull is to crawl out over him, going like he's jumping and kicking straight down the pin. What does he need to do, and to remind everyone who may not be aware of Chase Outlaw's injury, he separated his right shoulder, that is his free arm, at a touring pro event in Louisiana the end of August. What should we look for with that free arm to know he's got it under control? Don't look for any caution out of Chase Outlaw. <laughs> he's going to treat it like it was never injured in the first place. So in other words, not that positioning we often see from Fabiano Vieta. Yeah, or most any guy you would see with a free arm shoulder injury just coming back from that. Don't look for any of that out of Outlaw. He'll throw caution to the wind and go at it. Fire and smoke brought them both here in Texas. Chase Outlaw did his best, but not even close. Well, he was giving it everything he had, but this is the thing with fire and smoke on left-handed guys. They've got to try so hard to get around the corners, and he wants them back. You watch, here it's going to come, all the power. There goes his bull rope, lands in a terrible position. But when you got three of the best bullfighters of all time, really, out there protecting you, you don't get too worried about it. Frank Newsom, Shorty Gorham, and Jesse Byrne, that triangle of protection collapsed and allows Chase Outlaw to basically walk out of there unscathed. 
We'll now get to see what Derek Kolbaba can do. He was one of, I think, either 12 or 13 riders that went to the Touring Pro event, the Real-Time Velocity Tour event, excuse me, in Pendleton, Oregon, earlier this week. He mentioned to me in the locker room earlier that he likes going to those midweek events. It feels like it keeps his mind right. He's going to need that mindset against deep water. Yeah, and Kolbaba is a guy that's very, very capable. He's got a lot of ability. But Kolbaba's got to cut out the long buck off streets. And in big moments, he's got to start getting the job done. This is one of those big moments. Deep water, this bull can be spectacular. You mentioned big moments. We've lined a little something up for our fans. Let's go back to Oklahoma City. Oh, that bull known as Bruiser. Yeah, and here's the talent and the ability. And we've been talking about effort. Cole Baba's got plenty of that, too. You can see he can ride one of the best bulls in the world. The guy has got a lot of potential. Well, and your, your mind is right, by the way, because what you mentioned about the buck-off streaks is so true. He had 24 straight buck-offs to end 2016. He looked like this summer, he was the top point getter, right, on all the minor tours over the summer break. But since that summer break back on tour, he is only one of his last 14. Yeah, and, and those are rides past the halfway mark that are getting away from him. He's got to be able to finish. One of the knocks on Cole Baba is he likes to get his knees up really, really high. And there is nothing wrong with that. That's a great fail safe to have. That's like shocks on your vehicle. It can take a lot of the power away, but Cole Baba gets him so high at the wrong times that it sets him down on his butt and that gets his upper body back. I know you have tried to work with him different weeks with that. Here he goes. Derek Kolbaba took deep water deep, but you mentioned it, Mac. He's got so many of these rides that go wrong after six seconds. Yeah, and, and these are, I mean, it's like a broken record, but these are the ones he's got to make right here, and he starts it really good, but watch his knees come up and watch his butt go flat on this bull's back. Now, deep water's not having a whole lot of kick, so it's not going to bring him over the front end, but it does allow him to slide too far to the inside. Got to get up, get the weight driving down his legs. Take it away from the bull. Two early rides are still the standard. The best, Cody Nance. He's your bad boy more lead dog here in Austin. Last week, PBR world champion Cooper Davis took the 15-15 title in Springfield aboard the bull, cut the cord. Cooper Davis dominates. This week, he matches up against Big Cat. But first, Jess Lockwood takes on Jack Shot as the PBR 1515 bucking battle continues from Austin, Texas on CBS. We've got more bull riding to come from Texas's capital city. Be sure to tune into CBS Sports Network tonight to see more cowboys and bulls do battle on the dirt right here from Austin. The battles for the most part, have been going the Bulls' way. Two Cowboys have gotten qualified rides. Cody Nance and Joao Ricardo Vieira, 19-year-old Jess Lockwood, who's just a couple weeks away from his 20th birthday, trying to add his name to the list. He won round one already this weekend, Mac, but we want to take you back to a week ago scary situation in the 15-15 bucking battle in Springfield when he faced Bruiser. Yeah, Bruiser's making all the highlight reels, and Jess looks like he has a good seat, and here comes the backup out of Bruiser, and man, it got scary. Bruiser still fired up, and as always, these bulls, their intent is not to harm. They just want to go out there and do their job, which is put on a bucking show that's exactly what happened, Shorty Gorham, and unfortunately, Jess Lockwood just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Absolutely. You know, it's a dangerous game, and, and, and that's just what happens, Craig. But uh, I tell you what, he's, he's got a heck of a challenge ahead of him right here on this bull. I think Jess, this is another guy. He's, he's obviously one of the best that we've got, and he's very capable of riding this bull. But I think this bull is a little bit, uh, he's got a little hidden trick. He's going so fast, he's probably going to be around to the right with a lot of speed. But one thing that he's got that is hard to see because he's going so fast, He's got to step ahead. Uh, he's going to be away from Jess's hand. Jess rides plenty good away from his hand, but I think the front end is going to be a very important thing again here, uh, Justin. Uh, hey, without a doubt, Shorty, this ride has got to be mistake-free. 
Jack Shot is going to be stronger at eight than he is at four. This bull is going to keep getting better and better. Shorty met, mentioned the step ahead, and also his front end is going to get higher and higher off the ground as he goes. What did Jess share with you this week, by the way? Let's go back to the injury that he has been cleared by sports medicine, passed all the concussion protocol. Is he still young enough to not even dwell on that at all now that that's in the rearview mirror? Yeah, I think so. About three hours after that event, he was asking Cody Lambert if Bruiser was going to be an awesome because he <laughs> wanted another shot. <laughs> well, Jack's shot just kept working. And at five seconds, the ride ends. Jess Lockwood was trying to become the first ever left-handed rider to make eight. But Jack Schott's record against lefties stays perfect. Yeah, and the bull had a good day for Jess to ride him. But as good as Jess Lockwood is at 19, he's got to get better right here away from his hand. You can see he's so tough and he's such a strong little guy that he can get away with on a lesser bull of riding a little bit behind everything. But on the really tough ones, he has got to get up over their front end when they give him a chance. Even this weekend, he's mentioned that the lower back is sore, cleared from the concussion protocol, but can't do anything about that back pain at the moment. And now Cooper Davis will get his chance. You talked at the top of the show, Mac, about this pairing, but let's take you back a week ago. Yeah, <laughs> this guy right here, he can do it any direction. Cooper Davis, he's the hottest bull rider on tour right now. Nobody is riding better than Davis. Last week on Cut the Cord, into his hand, we've seen a great ride on Big Black Cat away from his hand. It doesn't matter to Davis. You want to talk about confidence, this guy's tank is full. Yeah, you mentioned Big Black Cat. That was a bonus ride we gave you from San Jose and last year. That was the last 15-15 bucking battle of 2016. I mentioned already Ryan Cooper Chan, Davis won three rounds just last weekend in Springfield. That has vaulted him to the top of the round win leaderboard. Well, the, he's just been awesome, man. There's no other way to put it. Here's the thing, he was never really having a bad season. He was just kind of hitting this here and there, making some decent rides. But in the last few weeks, this guy has turned it on and everybody has took notice. Well, he mentioned that to Leah last week in Springfield over multiple interviews that he is refocused, recommitted. We're seeing it now. Here he goes. Oh, hit himself pretty good. <laughs> Guess what, world? If you're not ready for Cooper Davis, he's knocking down doors. TLW's Big Cat just got ridden for the first time in 2017 and only the second time in his career. Hey, whack! Right here, this bull hits himself. You heard Shorty call it out. That's an automatic re-ride if Davis comes off of him right there. But instead, he just grits his teeth and gives it to Big Cat right here. That was an outstanding, gritty, great bull ride right there. Whatever I said in the open about this bull not matching up well, Andy I take Lance. it back. Andy lands on his feet, 91 and three quarters. Let's send it to Leah. Once that bull hipped himself, how do you attack without any hesitation? You know, you just got to go at a bull like that. You never know what he's going to do, and uh, you got to be 9-0 when he's going 9-0. Correct. <laughs> what a great description. Cooper Davis explodes onto the stage and the leaderboard here in Austin. He's your new bad boy mower lead dog. Wrangler's Long Live Cowboys 1515 Bucking Battle on CBS Sports is sponsored by Ford F Series. Visit PBR.com slash Ford for your chance to win a Ford F-150. And by Kubota Tractor Corporation. Great day so far in Austin. Three qualified rides. Defending PBR World Champ Cooper Davis has another one to love. 91 and three quarters a moment ago against TLW's Big Cat. He is the new leader and we have the top two men in the world still to come today here in Austin. First, Eduardo Aparecido, the only two-time winner in this format this season, Mac. In Sacramento, it was against Jack Shot. Yeah, into his hand, Eduardo just makes an outstanding ride right here. There's a reason he's the number two guy in the world. It's because he can make rides like this and then doing it away from his hand against Honey Hush and Thackerville. Guy's tough, Craig.
The most wins in this format over the course of the 15-15 bucking yet, battles, there's a tie. Joao Ricardo Vieira, Eduardo Aparecido. They both have four. Cooper Davis trying to insert his name, however, on that board as well. He'd have three if he wins. He has two riders to watch. A Parasito, you talked about it at the top of the show, Mac. You love this matchup with Mystical. Absolutely. And here's the thing. Davis is just steamrolling his way up the standings. Now, Eduardo can't do anything about how Cooper's riding. But what he can do is ride Mystical and really just keep doing his thing, man. And that's putting the pressure on the number one guy, Kaiki Pacheco. This is a great matchup. The Bulls usually around the end of the gate to the right. But as of late, the last couple of times, he's been to the left. That shouldn't matter with Eduardo. And both of the highlights, you've seen him doing it either direction. Thank you for leading me. We're going to talk about Pacheco and pressure in a moment. For a Parasito, no one has been number one this year longer than Fast Eddie. He came into this weekend only 150 points behind Kaiki Pacheco. These two, by the way, have met before. Tulsa, earlier this season, it went 7.72 seconds. Yeah, and for me on that particular day, that was just a lack of concentration on Eduardo's part because he rode the bull. I mean, he had him knocked out. The bull jumped on out of the spin, and Eduardo came off. Got to finish him today. This bull has such a great resume. And today he has a better out against the world number two, a Parasito, not even close, three and change. Behind everything, from word go, as soon as this bull turns to leave out of the chute, Eduardo is reared back and he stays right there. He just tries to cold, cut him off and hold what he's got. See, he never makes an attempt to get back to the front end. So when Mystical does kick, it, it's just gonna finish him. One more rider to go, and it is fitting that it is our world number one with a golden opportunity. Cooper Davis, meanwhile, waiting to see if he will win his 10th round of the season. Kaiki Pacheco, our world number one, is the only man who has a say in that. Pacheco came into the weekend 150 points ahead of Eduardo Aparecido, 550 points ahead of Cooper Davis. But Davis is looking to take a big chunk out of that lead. Pacheco, though, matches up well against Utter Lover. If I was these guys, I would be riding like I was tied with Cooper Davis because the way he's going, no lead is safe that you have on him right now. Pacheco has got to get it going right here. He gets a ride when he needed it most. Chances are Cooper Davis will win, but Kaiki will get points. And when you're the world number one, that is what you need almost more than anything else. That's how you answer right there. Like I said, these guys can't control how great Cooper Davis is riding, but they can control what they do. Pacheco does everything in his power against Utter Lover right here. Gets a big score. He's going to win second this round and protect his lead. You saw the emotion from Pacheco. Before he left the shoots, he had only ridden one out of his last 11. The two Titans congratulate each other, but Cooper Davis has done it again. He wins the 15-15 bucking battle here in Austin after winning the 15-15 bucking battle in Springfield. He now has 10 round wins this season. He's ridden and won four out of the last seven. He's with Leah. Cooper Davis takes another win. What does it take to stay so consistent, especially against bulls that are this tough? You know, I just, I feel really good right now. My mind's on bull riding, and uh, I don't think I've ever felt so good in my life. And to do it right here in Texas, it makes that much, much more worth it. Go back to that last ride on Big Cat and the opportunity that you had to take it one way or another, and you followed through. Tell me about it. Yeah, he hipped himself right there, but he's too big and scary to find a spot and get off. So we went on with it and uh, paid off. Congratulations. Thank you. I like that self-preservation had a hand in staying on the Kubota ride of the day is the winning ride aboard Big Cat. Surprise, surprise, it's Cooper Davis again. This guy's riding outstanding. Here's what I love about it. It's not just the bulls he's supposed to ride, it's the bulls that he's not supposed to ride. He's riding all of them.
We look at our world standings. Pacheco, by virtue of getting second, still protects that margin ahead of Eduardo Aparecido. But Cooper Davis closes yet again. Now only 339 points out with more to go still in Austin. Make sure to tune in to CBS Sports Network tonight for more of those rides. And the Built Ford Tough Series continues from Texas. Join us right here on CBS in a few weeks for another 15-15 bucking battle, this time from Idaho. For Justin McBride, Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching. Don't